Sanjay, I'll start with you. Uh, you would have seen uh, Prashant Kishore's interview to me and then a whole host of other interviews by other platforms also took place. I felt there was a lot of focus on his forecast that the BJP will be back, but not enough on his simultaneous analysis that the brand Modi is in decline. And the reason the BJP is going to be back, he believes, is that the opposition didn't start to do its work early enough. You have said Prashant Kishore is fundamentally wrong. Why is he wrong? Tell us. Uh, Barkha, you, uh, amongst all of us on the panel, has probably been at the ground more than anybody else. And one thing which is very apparent, and this I'm hearing from a lot of people, is that there is no wave in this election. If at all, there has been indifference, which has, over a period of time, may have been building into a slight degree of even anti-incumbency. Uh, Mr. Modi's brand per se, I think, has diminished, has been diminishing for a while. If you saw it definitely in the state elections. But what is very obvious at this point of time, where I tend to disagree with what I think uh, Prashant Kishore has talked about, how Modi's brand has declined, but the BJP's seats will increase or remain the same. They're actually inherently contradictory because the BJP is now smaller than the Modi political brand. In fact, Modi wins the elections for the BJP. Uh, the BJP doesn't even talk about BJP guarantee. They talk about Modi ki guarantee. So everyone who knows politics knows that many candidates won their elections in 2019 simply sitting at home because all Mo Mr. Modi had to do was to make some speeches and campaign. So the larger issue is this election is being fought. Please, let's not ignore 10 years of Mr. Modi. Number two. There have been bread and butter issues that have become fundamental to this election, which is unemployment, inflation, corruption, governance, fear, washing machine, etc. Also, one factor that a lot of people seem to have ignored because, you know, the favorite whipping boy has always been Rahul Gandhi. You know, for whether it's a political analyst or definitely for the opposition, they have assumed that Rahul Gandhi is a constant. Because they vilified him, ridiculed him, called him Papu, etc. They believe that Rahul Gandhi is a constant. He's not. Just as Mr. Modi's brand has declined, where I think Prashant has probably missed the story, Rahul Gandhi's brand has actually gone up. I'm not going to comment on some uh, pollsters, survey percentages. The larger issue is that post the Bharajuro Yatra, post the Bharajuro Nyay Yatra, and, you, and how do you make out a person's confidence, right? Through the way they talk, through the body language, through the, you know, the whole aggression, the tone and the tenor. And you can see here that Rahul Gandhi is not the Rahul Gandhi of 19. And Mr. Modi is not the leader that he was in 19. Okay. I think okay. that contrast needs to be understood. And it is having a very direct impact on this election. Uh, you said that or you and a number of your supporters have said that Prashant Kishore is in some ways shilling for the BJP. But if you hear the operative parts of the interview, he may be saying that the BJP is coming back, but he's been really, really critical of the Prime Minister. And in fact, the argument he seems to be making is that Modi could have been defeated had the opposition done a better job. Over to you, Sanjay. Well, you know, I have heard uh, Prashant's interview both, uh, both with you as well as Karan Thapar yesterday. And I think, you know, the fundamental point when you talk of a of a political brand where I think he, he and I tend to be on the same platform that it has been diminishing for a while. So I guess uh, he's buttressed the point I made earlier in your program. How does a brand really diminish? I don't want to indulge in some abstract intellectual theorization about an upper caste consensus, etc. I think that basically the brand gets affected by performance. And if, if anyone believes, and including Prashant believes, that a farmer distress, which we saw on the streets, if anyone on the panel or even the viewers believes that the serious unemployment problem of India is not going to impact Mr. Modi's uh, electoral performance or the food inflation won't, or the fact that when you look at the issues of farmers, the young, the poor, the women, you know, the Manrega issues, the, the Congress's ability to go out and successfully make the guarantees that have made it win Telangana and Karnataka into a national narrative. If these things people believe are absolutely zero impact, I think a lot of people could be relying on a 
anecdotal but, but he's not saying that there's zero creative. impact he's saying they're very impactful and the opposition didn't do a good job in channeling that distress that's exactly he's not saying that there's zero impact barkhaba that's exactly what i pointed out in my article so if we agree that the bjp's performance has actually been subpar that mr modi actually today is no longer as trusted and credible as before i mean look at his speeches i mean forget the ridiculous hate speeches he's made yesterday he said something as obtuse and outrageous as saying that in the prime minister's house a future prime minister could be giving terrorist biryani this is the current prime minister of this country so you know the assumption that we all have is that the people of this country are not enlightened or smart enough to see the wheat from the chaff or can make out the ridiculous and absurd conversations that has become the political narrative of the day so i'm i'm coming down to this point barkha if you look at the bjp and the congress historically they end up with around 310 to 315 seats together in any lok sabha election barring i have mentioned 2019 and 1984 on an average they aggregate approximately 50% of the vote share and really it is a zero sum game between the two and i think what yogendra yadav has really hit the nail on the head and you know he and i haven't spoken about it let me tell you this publicly we have had no conversations at all the truth is if you look at the trends that i'm getting and these are not trends that i've got from congress sympathizers if you look at the look at the performance likely coming out from karnataka maharashtra where i live i'm telling you maharashtra is going to give an absolutely stunning verdict in the days ahead you can mock at it people can say hey sanjay is a congress you know kind of a sympathizer so he will say what he wants to these are going to be a takeaways from the bjp tally so my concluding point because i know this program can't go on and on is the congress is diminishing the bjp if the bjp is losing the congress is gaining and the congress needs to just go to 90 seats and you know for a lot of people who mock that how can congress get 90 or 100 i need to remind them not long ago the congress was at 206 earlier it was at over 300 and it has been at 414 so so one the of congress the very interesting points sanjay the- that you make one of the very interesting and important points that you make is that the congress does not have to do spectacularly well in this election to yeah. halt the bjp and i think your magic number is what 90 Right, 90. I think the Congress gets 90, and a lot of the critics will say, "But you know, does it mean is holding on to 2019?" But in 2019, it had an eight percent hit rate against the BJP. So don't worry about that. If it's a BJP versus the Congress, the Congress is good at 90 to make sure that the BJP is not in okay, government. Okay, l- 